We will start with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and the very first I will discuss something conceptual about it. So it is the first we will do some conceptual discussion and then we will go to its derivation. Its derivation is completely mathematical and the conceptual discussion is important so we will have to first discuss the conceptual meaning of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle which unfortunately uh, is not conveyed uh, in a right way. So the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is we write is sigma x sigma p which is the standard deviation or the variance from the standard value and position and momentum is greater or equal to h bar over 2. This is somehow also written as delta x delta p is greater or equal to h bar over 2. I will prefer to use this notation instead of this notation because this notation has delta x and delta we normally use for the change. So it creates a misconception that this is like change in position and change in momentum but it is not a change this is this is a standard deviation if someone from delta x means that this is the variation from the standard value then it's fine but as it gives a bit wrong sense so i will not use this notation the very first thing about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle are the very big misconception let me clarify that, that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle has nothing the Heisenberg uncertainty principle has nothing to do with the measurement with the measurement of x and p. This has nothing to do with the measurement as it is normally said or usually said that if we measure the position correctly then the momentum will become incorrect. So this principle has nothing to do with it and it is also uh, to mention that measurement is something else and information is something else. So the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is actually stated is that it is it is impossible to know to know the position to know the position and momentum or velocity of a body of a body it is impossible to know the position and momentum of a body simultaneously simultaneously so it is impossible to know the position and momentum of a body simultaneously and if we know them if we want to know them simultaneously an error will occur and that uncertainty that we will have will be of the order of h bar so h bar is a very very small value 
h bar approximately 10 raised to the power minus 34 joule second and this joule second per radian. So this is this is minus 34. So minus 34 means of 0 we will have to go 34 zeros and then there will be 1. So it's a very fractional difference, but for subatomic particles, it does matter. Now, what is meant by this one and what is wrong with the measurement date? It is not related with the measurement. Normally, it is said that when, for example, it is an electron or any subatomic particle, and we want to locate the position of this particle and we shine light on this one. Now what will happen that this particle when it is struck by this light, this particle will be no more stationary or its momentum will be not that which was earlier. So we located the position accurately but we got a problem with the momentum or if for example the electron is going for example this way and our light comes in this way and it's struck here then the particle goes and we want to find its momentum so we found its momentum but the particle position has been compromised now these two things are related with the measurement of x and p and Heisenberg uncertainty principle has nothing to do with the measurement. So it's completely a uh, wrong concept that such measurement cause or is a result of Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So the right way to describe that it is impossible to know the x and b of a body simultaneously and let me explain this further that for example we are having a balance and on this balance we are having let's say here we are having x and we are having P here. So, if the uncertainty in this one decreases like it goes down, then this one will go up. The uncertainty in momentum will go up. Or if this one comes down, means the uncertainty in the momentum goes down then this one will go up, the uncertainty in position will go up. So it is like a uh, balance and this balance is provided means this balance is provided by this relation that these two variance multiplication will always be greater than h bar by 2. So where is the problem? that this uncertainty is occurring. This uncertainty is completely not there in classical mechanics. While this is only in quantum mechanics, when we go to small particles like subatomic particles, then we know that the nature, the wave well nature becomes dominant. So we are having both particle plus wave nature. This duality is there. And this duality is actually causing a problem of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. That when we combine these two, then it gave rise to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle let me explain this thing further that when we consider a subatomic particle then this subatomic particle is represented by a wave function 
and this flow function is a wave and we are representing this by psi. Now to find the particle, what we do? To find the particle, we take its probability psi mod square dx, this should always be equal to 1. We take the probability of the wave function. So, this is actually locating a particle there. And psi mod square is equal to 1. This will always be equal to 1 because we locate a particle that it is the probable, the most probable there. Now, look here that here we are treating the particle like a wave but it's a particle itself. So, to merge the two, this problem will arise. And now, let me explain this thing further, that when we will have momentum, then momentum is proportional to 1 over lambda. And lambda is a property of a wave. And when we say about the position of a particle, so the position of a particle is x. So to find x, we will have to localize our wave. When we localize our wave, then how we can localize our wave? We will have to take the summation or the superposition of are the cumulative response of a wave and that causes a problem that localization means its particle nature and wave it is related to the momentum. So let me explain this further that if I will have if I will have a single wavelength for example, one wave and it has a single wavelength. So, I can calculate the momentum very easily, which is h bar k, which is h over lambda. So, if I am having only one wavelength, then I can determine the momentum very accurately and there will be no inaccuracy there are no uncertainty there but what will happen to the localization of this wave now single wave is infinite it cannot be localized so in order to localize a wave we will have the superposition of different waves and they will localize like superposition will occur and they will localize and we can talk of the position. The position will become well defined and when the position will become well defined then a problem will occur with the momentum, so with the wavelength because we cannot have a single wavelength here and that is the basic reason that this uncertainty will occur. Let's see this one that sigma x is actually equal to if I take the position and I square this one and I subtract from this one the expectation value or the average value of position and square it. So, x being squared and then the expectation value squared is being subtracted from it and we call this the standard deviation, the standard deviation or the deviation from a standard value or the actual value. So, this is the deviation from, this is a standard value and how much deviation occurs this way and this way is determined by sigma x. So, 
Similarly, sigma p will be p square minus the p expectation value square, the average value of momentum square, and this will give us the momentum standard deviation. Now let's discuss localization of a wave, that how a wave localization occur. For example, we are having different, let's say, sine waves. So all waves are sine waves and they may have different amplitudes and different wavelengths. So we will consider their superposition. Let's say, let me plot here the waves and let me plot here, let's say, position. And here the momentum or momentum I will plot in terms of wavelengths. So position and wavelength. Let me write this and this is the position and we are having here the wavelengths. Now, for example, very the different waves are there and they are having different amplitudes and different and different wavelengths. When they will superimpose, then what will happen? That we will have means no localization here we are having the absence here and when for example these wave will superimpose then we may have some localization like this and what will happen that the momentum or the wavelength is now specified like this and when more waves will come in then this localization will be improved because more waves more superposition and more localization and what will happen here that this will extend this will extend and if for example more wavelengths come in then the localization will be further improved and we will have the wavelength the broadness in wavelength more and Let's say we are having plus infinity and minus infinity here. And finally, when we will sum up all the waves, localization will be at its best. And what will happen to the wavelength? It will become so broad that over here we will not have the ending of it. So if we are looking at this region, then is the wave we have is the waves we have localized, localized means we have found the position, then the momentum or the wavelength is so broad that we cannot know about the wavelength. And that is the reason that localization means when you determine the position, when you know the exact position, the wavelength become uncertain, the momentum become uncertain. And the reverse we discussed that for a single wavelength, we have exact momentum, means no uncertainty in momentum, but there is no localization. 
So we cannot locate a single wavelength. When this is a single wavelength, then we cannot locate the particle where the particle is. So that's the reason and this gave rise to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So sigma x and sigma p, this will always come out to be greater than h bar. Another uh, uncertainty means another principle here in the energy and time. So I can say that delta E and delta T is also greater or equal to h bar over 2. And here we can understand this thing much easily that delta E delta T or if I want to write this in the notation then this is sigma E and sigma T greater equal h bar over 2. Now if I consider this situation then the uncertainty in energy and the uncertainty in time will always be greater than h bar over 2. Now what is meant by this? If I again consider the subatomic particles then in subatomic particles I know that if I will have a subatomic particle which has a very long lifetime so a very long lifetime will give rise to a very accurate energy so if it is having a very long lifetime so we will have means when this one is very large then we will have this one very accurate and just like this one this one is no very large so we got this one very accurate so long lifetime subatomic particles has no variation no variation in mass their masses has no variation and if we have a short lifetime subatomic particles then they are having more variation in mass they are having a range of masses we are always having plus minus with them now why i am taking mass because energy is directly related to mass as momentum is related to wavelength. So more this one here, if we will have more this one, more delta E or sigma E, then sigma T will be less. If this one is down, this one will be up and vice versa. So the uncertainty principle is actually not telling us anything about the measurement, but it tells us about the variation from the standard value or the uncertainty in the measurements.